So this is the methodology of uh, what is called, is usually referred to as the seamless phase two, phase three design. So it's the multiple looks combining p-values design, where if you select it, again, you can have, it's typically a two look design. So you have at the interim look, uh, before the interim look, you might have a number of arms compared to control. And then at the interim look, you want to select either the best working arm or the two best working arms to move into the next phase to be compared against uh, the control. So the way that um, you would, again, the, the boundaries, the efficacy boundaries can be in terms of uh, an adjusted uh, p-value. And then the treatment selection, you can select either the best treatment to move into the next stage or select the best two treatments to move into the next stage. And then when you have done that, you will be combining the results of the two phases with uh, a combination function. So typically, you can use the inverse normal combination of p-values between the two stages uh, to do this. And you can also use different multiplicity adjustments for um, the, the multiple arms that you have on the first stage, whether, whether this is Bonferroni, the CDAC, SIMS, or the Dunnett parametric uh, test. Uh, we have uh, stopping boundaries for efficacy and futility. The trial will stop the first time that any of these multiple arms crosses an efficacy boundary, or if all arms cross a futility boundary, it'll stop. Uh, but in addition, as you go along look by look, you can drop the losers. So uh, any, any, any individual arm that crosses a futility boundary can be discarded, and uh, or the remaining arms can keep going. Uh, you, you specify that you have three looks, you specify that you have four arms, and uh, you want 90% power, and uh, you, you can specify uh, the, the means that you, I'm, I'm now designing for three means of 0 0.18, 0 0.18, and 0.18, with an allocation equal, equally, equally allocated, and a sigma of 0.5, and then I can press the compute button, and, uh, and I'll get, uh, uh, the output which I've saved over here, and this output says that now uh, I need I need 130 patients per arm rather than 165 per arm uh, for for the two arm case. So the question is why did I uh, why do I need fewer patients per arm when I've got uh, four arms compared to two? Well, there's more chance there's more chances of of crossing. Uh, a boundary if I've got four arms instead of two. On the other hand, uh, the boundary has got to be stricter because under the null hypothesis also I've got more chances of crossing uh, that, that boundary. So then uh, next thing to do is you ask yourself, well, you know, let's, let's look at the boundaries. What, what do the boundaries look like for, the, for these two different uh, designs? One which is a two-arm design and one which is a forearm design. So here you can see this uh, three equally spaced looks. This is a classic O'Brien Fleming boundary for three equally spaced looks uh, with a, a Z statistic of 3.7, 2.5, and 1. Point, you know, close to 1.96. The, an O'Brien Fleming boundary is pretty conservative uh, at the last look. You know, you've spent some alpha along the way, but it's very close to 1.96. Not so with the forearm trial. Now the final uh, criterion is much stricter. It's 2. Point, almost 2.4 in order to preserve the type 1 error. 